Hello everybody and welcome to another knockoff review. In today's video we're taking a look at the Weijang Robot Force M05 Hide Shadow. Yeah, wasn't this another figure they had a competition to name and then people weren't happy with the name and then Weijang changed it to something completely different which is still a little bit naff. <laughs> but they're really smashing artwork on the front there not sure if that's theirs whether they've done that themselves or whether they've um, half inched it off somebody else but it looks amazing to say the least on the back of the box we've got some product shots and some cool shapes some fine lines close up and realistic scene simulation cabin <laughs> I don't know, I think they're just plucking random translations. But uh, we get the idea. This is set B, I believe. It was set B. I got This is from TF Direct. They got the sample sent over. So here it is. Uh, set B, I believe, is the one that comes with this uh, realistic scene here with Scorponok and the little car and our army dudes. Now, like other Weijang products, it does come in a polystyrene tub. I just love the fact that it's got Blackout's face on the top piece. And everything is nicely housed, and we get this film sheet over the top, keeping everything spankingly clean. And here we have him out of his package. Uh, we get a pack of the rotor blades all attached together. We get a large tail fin with... Um, Bakustud. Pretty sure that's uh, kind of meant to say a blackout. <laughs> Let's hope that we can get somebody like Toy Hacks to get a label to go over there. If not, I'll be replacing that with, with a little bit of paint going over the top because it's not exactly printed overly straight anyway. And these lines aren't quite as finely done as I would like. But anyway, I'm being a bit nitpicky, aren't I? Uh, we get the display base section which i personally i think is probably a bit i don't want to say pointless it's a nice touch and you don't have to buy this piece you know it's an optional extra uh, the car is really small and you're going to get these little tiny army figures they're actually fairly decent uh, that one's got a a gash down his face there where it's been joined and they're made of a rubbery textured plastic but they're not terrible but at the same time they're not <laughs> they're not exactly uh, amazing and they're not done to the same scale as the army chaps that came with the Wei Zhang's brawl so there this fits in here like this you just push down over that nubbin and same here these can just fit down like that so he's guarding the perimeter and then we can bring in our scorpionok which is nicely done that's a really nice scorpionok it's nearly the same size as the one that came out in 2007. Really nice levels of detailing and paint on there. And he is absolutely massive. And basically what you do, you bring this piece up and this is gonna form a stand. You basically sit this piece up like so. This here comes down. This rotates around like so. So we've now got kind of a brick wall look to it and then this is going to come down and if you look on the underside there's these tabs those are just going to tab and line up and that's going to slot in like so and then we can just bring this down it's not perfect but if you like your little dioramas then i think that's a pretty nice little addition there uh, he definitely looks like he's uh, going to attack them. He's got the car there and uh, he, I'm just genuinely impressed with Scorbinok. He looks freaking awesome. He's got this tail that comes up. 
What a nice little chappy. Now let's move these trees up and get them out of the way. This is then gonna come up and sit down as well. And this is gonna form the underside. It doesn't attach uh, in his bot mode. There's no need for it to attach in his bot mode. Uh, it's basically an optional extra, something that wasn't included with the original figure by Hasbro and Takara. Uh, this is basically just a filler piece but I like it, I like the little diorama, although I think it uh, was one of the options to get this but done in just that gun metal, because uh, if it was, uh, I think I picked the wrong one. Now on the original blackout, uh, this section here uh, wasn't there basically, so this would just fold in and sit in the inside here, and this was all attached as a solid lump to the back of blackout, whereas now this is all a nice little separate Piece. This will now come down like so and using this back piece here this is now going to slide on both sides like this and then that can rock up like so. But yeah unfortunately it no longer tucks in um, personally, I'm not going to have it attached. I don't like how that looks. I don't like how it sits down there. There's a lot of weight and not a lot of stabilizing to hold that into position. And don't get me wrong, it's fine when it's in the helicopter mode, uh, but this is not the helicopter mode. It just drops down, which is unfortunate because this is parts forming and I do not like parts forming when you don't really need to. They've added a gimmick, which is which is great. You know, it's nice that they've added a gimmick on there. Uh, but they're targeting this at uh, an adult collector. They've oversized a studio series product, and I, I think considering the audience that's going to more than likely buy this product, uh, they don't necessarily need gimmicks you know i think we're a bit beyond that but uh, hey maybe maybe i'm wrong uh, very unlikely but <laughs> hey anyway let's put this over to one side because this is going to form part of the tail fin and again they really do need to check their translations and how they copy over text because this is bad they've done it really badly. You'll have to forgive how I have him posed, I have him propped up on my turntable because he was just too big. But look at that beefy, chunky monkey. My initial thoughts were, oh, he's not actually as big as I thought he was going to be. Then I realized that his legs were all compressed down, much like we do with Starscream. And if you kind of open up his legs a bit more, there is a lot of height hidden away on the inside there. And I do apologize for it being a little bit jumpy today. It's uh, just due to the weight and how he's balanced. But you can see all of that intricate detailing. The blades go on rather smoothly. They just tab in and then fold down nicely on the back. And I'll give it to them. It does tidy up a lot better having that piece as a detachable piece, but However much you want to sugarcoat it and make it look lovely, it's still parts forming and there's no way of getting around that. And here he is stood still alongside Scorponok. He has an amazing shelf presence. Now I've only transformed him twice so far. Uh, people have been complaining on some of the Chinese accounts saying that they've had breakages and stress marks. Uh, touch wood. I haven't had either. I haven't even noticed anywhere that would stress, but he does look gorgeous. They've done an amazing job. Can't wait so we can get some more figures like Megatron, etc., into our collections. And not gonna lie, I kind of thought Studio Series Blackout was a good size. <laughs> oh, this does kind of put him to shame a little bit. Uh, got much brighter paint applications on there. We have these hands that can actually rotate and they are articulated, which is something 
that we've been missing from pretty much every blackout ever. The paint scheme is just done to an exceptionally good standard. It's just such a shame that the language barrier has once again caused a problem because those uh, tempos are wrong, severely wrong. Now, for those of you curious about scale in the movie, I believe Prime was 28 feet and Blackout was 33. So that, to me, looks like it scales remarkably well with the MPM Optimus Prime. And here we have him with the Studio Series Optimus Prime as well. Now people can hate on the oversized movie figures all they like, but some of these companies are doing an amazing job. Uh, that is the Black Mamba Starscream. Uh, I think Starscream was 32 or 33 feet as well. He may have been 31, but he does sound slightly shorter. And of course we have our Dream Factory offering on the station. It appears to be spot on scale wise with the MPM Prime as well. So uh, it's a good time to be a Movieverse fan. And for those curious, uh, we definitely need an oversized Jetfire because he is way too small. But at the same time, Scorponok, uh, that's not a bad scale for him. They look pretty good together. It's just Jetfire is meant to tower over all of these Decepticons. Just taking a closer look at Blackout, I absolutely adore that face sculpt. All I can see there is this being a moustache. <laughs> uh, articulation, the head is ball mounted so we can look up a little bit, down a little bit, left and right. Not as much range there as I would like. We do get a little bit of tilting quizzically. The shoulders now have a double pin, so they are quite firm. I can go out to the side on a friction joint, ratcheted forwards. Got a ratcheted bend on the elbow, fully-ish. <laughs> Articulated hands with a rotation there and pivot on the fingers and the thumb, which in itself is leaps and bounds more than what we got with the official product. Now the waist is kind of locked in, just on the inside here. I love those intricate details, look at all the chain detailing along there as well. But the legs can come forwards on a ratchet, back, out to the side, upper thigh rotation. We get that chicken leg thing going on with the double knees that we got with Starscream. And again, they've absolutely nailed it when it comes to paint application. Uh, the feet can pivot left and right you can go up and down like so and we do get some additional toes which were never there to begin with and they have articulation as well but the pivot the pivot is where all of the magic happens it's all of these little extras that really do set this apart from the original obviously we can remove the blade section if you choose to, and we've got this kind of highlighted detailing here. One of the personal highlights of this, if in my opinion, is this split missile section now, where we get a full missile there in his robot mode, much like it should be. And this untabs, I'll show you during the transformation, and it untabs, it opens up, there's a hinge underneath there, and it really does kind of bulk that out. Uh, but he's a very kind of trim slimline figure when you've got all of those bits removed, haven't you? Uh, we do have spring-loaded sections. This is all spring-loaded here. This is spring-loaded. There's spring-loaded sections on the inside of the legs as well. Ooh, this could be a contender for my figure of the year. <laughs> now, for those of you interested, uh, if you have some MPM sized jets like the leader class star screams or the nitro zeusers he does look very nice kind of propped up alongside them yes i do have some dust in my jet jet turbine we're putting some nails and screws in the wall and hanging the jets so they're kind of flying upwards but they do look remarkably good together it really does remind me of that scene where he's uh, coming to land as a helicopter and they're asking the pilot to step out and then they go and then we have blackout. A nice range on those joints, so you could even pull off a superhero landing of some sorts.
Now to get Blackout transformed up, it's pretty much identical to what we got with the Studio Series, but let's cover it. Anyway, you want to bring the legs down. They just sit flat like so. Bring this lower piece down. The toes will just rock in, and those are just going to sit on the inside and tab in. Like so. So again, with the side, rotate that around, and that's just going to sit and tab in. The bottom of the feet themselves rotate around, and then that's going to slide back into position. It's going to come up and tab into place. Now you want to bring this piece up like so, so that it meets. And basically, this section here is going to come in, and then this is going to slide up and flatten down, so it keeps everything tucked out of the way. You can then bring the wheels down, rotate the legs 90 degrees. Draw the, the lower torso and the crotch are detached. You just want to give that tug with a reasonable amount of force. Ugh. Like so. Once this is disengaged, we can bring bring that backwards so we can gain access to the underside. Bring the is it the refueling nozzle? I think I don't know. I think that's what it is. I could be completely wrong. And all of this underside is going to come out. This is all going to come around to the front, like so. And with this now coming around to the front, we can bring that all the way up and down and fill the underside there. I love how that goes. And then this just sits in there like that. This lifts up and back. And then this panel can come forwards and that's just gonna come in and close off nicely. The crotch piece comes up like so. And then these pieces here are on a rotating hinge. You want to push and rotate those around. And this is gonna form the base. So the legs are gonna come all the way down to the bottom like so. And then this whole piece here will eventually end up sliding up and into this back. The energy can needs to come all the way back down on its own axis, push and lock that in. And then this is gonna come in and tab into the underside, he says, of that crotch panel just down there. That's gonna come in and that's gonna push and locate, tabbing in. And then these panels here can just come over and push, tabbing in. Uh, these panels here can come around and they are gonna wrap around. These are gonna push, tab, and help lock that into position. And bring these legs back into the center, like so, starting to come together. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Remove the rotary blade if you haven't already done so. This untabs and that untabs like so. This comes up. This piece here rocks it's on itself and just slide in with the fingers slightly bent. The arms with a little bit of ignorance will just come untabbed from that torso panel by giving it a forcible <coughs> tug and extending it like so. Uh, which was a complete another mission. But this piece here now slides down. This piece slides underneath like so. So we have this arm just sits over like that. This panel can then come up and open. So when we bring that back in, that's gonna form the side section of the helicopter. And with this piece, Attached on here, we can then bring this section up, and that is going to slide in over here and in there, covering all of the side pod section off. Bring this forwards so we can see what we're doing. This opens all the way up. Join these together like so, and then this 
get this all the way out of the way like that this should he says slide in there and that's going to cover off all of this side and all this piece here is going to push down and locate and now it's just a matter of tabbing all of these pieces in and just running along the panels there are loads to just tab in to various points and they really do hold securely as well benefits of being a Weijiang product is something they've always done to a very high standard oh. now would be a good time to push and attach this tail fin section which is going to tab over these lips like so and like so and then this is going to slide down and you see all of these tabs again just need to push and secure into position we can bend scorbinox tail over and he is going to fit into this little void push and tab in at the top here his shoulders just tab in on there his tail should close off and there we have him sectioned off in there nicely now this army base piece comes down and as you can see from the other side here that's just going to sit on these turbine pieces there's just going to poke through and then we have to go through the entire vehicle just tabbing everything in like i said this isn't an ex essential part but i think it really does finish the figure off and then finally we can just bring down that landing pad like that. Just put the rotor blades back in and then bend them all round so that they are where they are meant to be. This is glorious. Looks absolutely amazing. I can see people doing fantastic stop motions with this. Just a few more tweaks and there we go there we have blackout in all of his glory and i mean it is wonderful uh, the wheel that's all rubber this actually pivots it's incredible uh, my base doesn't quite tab in as well as i'd like it does tend to pop off occasionally but that's because i've been kind of manhandling it to see the kind of resistance levels but incredibly large if we bring in one of our seekers again bring star screen right to the end of the tail fin he is dwarfed by this thing both in length and in width now scale wise i think he's still a little bit too small for the mpm series i think he's meant to be 90 feet uh, when it comes to his helicopter mode, I mean, it's big, but it's not quite that big. Possibly, in my opinion, uh, he scales better with the deluxe size figures in his vehicle mode. But that's in the eye of the beholder. And finally, here we have him alongside his official counterpart. Uh, yes, I know I've moved the propellers just so you can see, but I'm sorry, Hasbro, but you are going on the sail pile. Wei Zhang have absolutely nailed it it's a glorious glorious figure absolutely love the size shape paint applications it really does tick a heck of a lot of boxes uh, whether you pick the a b or c configuration i think you're going to be over the moon with a glorious gorgeous interpretation of blackout i mean that's just absolutely massive but uh, toy hacks please pay attention this figure is going to be selling like hotcakes please make us some labels to cover the ghastly inaccurate tampo prints that they've given us uh, we've even got tampos at the front here by the cockpits is it the cockpit on a copter but as you can see there we've got Combat helicopters, a rescue. Also, no idea. 
absolutely no idea but it's absolutely massive and by far one of my favorite figures to date which is surprising because we've had some amazing knockoffs this year already and this one may have just taken the biscuit until next time from myself and the rest of the team over at tf direct thank you for watching this is the weijang oversized studio series blackout aka m05 hide shadow